But let me invite uh, our Minister of Foreign Affairs, another distinguished speaker, um, Mr. Grzegorz Schetyna, who will address the issues of uh, what, what kind of security challenges and threats uh, we face and on what kind of a world we, we find ourselves today in 2015. Mr. Minister. Mr. President, Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, it's not easy to talk in home city, you know. Um, but it's a great pleasure for sure for, for me uh, to address this distinguished audience for key government officials, business leaders, think tankers, journalists, all of you. Firstly, I would like to thank the city of, of Wrocław, my home town, as I told. And the place which I, I admire for its ambience, its energy, and the business and political climate. It's no coincidence in that in the next year, 2016, Wrocław will be hold the title of European Capital of Culture. My thanks also go to the people behind the, the success and the success of this event, Mayor Rafał Dudkiewicz, President Fred Kempi of the Atlantic Council, as well as their dedicated staff. The Wrocław Global Forum has become an important meeting place where decision makers from around the global globe shape the public debate on the most pressing question of today. The year's edition could not come at a better time than now. In the weeks and months ahead, we in Europe, but also in the United States, will be discussing and deciding issues vital to our security and prosperity, and prosperity about our, our future. Today, I would like to touch upon several such issues. First, the need to strengthen the institutional order based on the international law as a remedy to the challenges which we face now. Secondly, the need for the European Union in spite of the many problems we faced in the East and the South to work together and present a joint strategy for combating these threats. Third, the need to highlight the advantages of global trade liberalization and how this may help create a more stable international environment. Ladies and gentlemen, the last couple of years have been particularly volatile, not only from the Polish perspective, not only from the European or American perspective either. Just by following the news, we see how complex and urgent the challenges are. Civil war on our doorsteps, falling and fa failed states that cannot provide shelter to their own people, millions of refugees and internally displaced person, persons, people murdered in cold blood by Islamic radicals, hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants reaching Europe's, Europe's shores, and thousands who perish in the Mediterranean trying to do so. All of this comes before Europe has even fully recovered from the economic and financial crisis. The events to the east of our borders are equally disturbing. The European security architecture has been thrown off balance by Russia's annexation of Crimea and its aggression in eastern Ukraine. The disrespect shown by a key OSCE country towards the territorial integrity of its neighbor and towards the peaceful cooperation among nations points to a major problem, the instrumental use and misuse of international norms. I believe that these principles, which are the basis of international peace and stability should not be subject to selective, one-sided interpretation depending on the goals you want to achieve. I'm well aware there is no magic solution to the challenges ahead. But what I do know is that these problems cannot be tackled, 
tackled by a single state alone. They require more responsibility, more action, and more leadership from the whole democratic, we can say free world. The first step is to identify the root causes of the crisis. What we are often dealing with the deficiencies in democratic norms and basic human rights, poverty, economic stagnation, marginalization, and hopelessness that lead to religious radicalization, fanatism, and eventually terrorism. There is more. The myths and false ambitions of former empires, coupled with the relative weakness of their neighbors, often lead to military aggression, or at best, to frozen conflicts. Barbaric crimes cannot be left to be punished. Conflicts should be resolved. And we must all be able to defend ourselves wherever and whenever it's necessary. We have a full spectrum of instruments to our disposal. Our goal is to make sure that the institutional order which we have invested so much in the last decades remains intact and efficient. First, we cannot let the OSC become less relevant, relevant as a platform of dialogue on security and stability in Europe. Despite the occasional criticism, the OSCE has been one of the very few instruments which we can actually use to limit the scope of violence in the eastern, eastern Ukraine. Second, after a thorough consideration that led to tough decision, we have now reason to believe that NATO is transforming itself into a full-blooded political and military structure capable of defending all of its members, including those in our region. There is still a lot to be done before next year's NATO summit in Warsaw. Mr. President told about it. But I am convinced that collectively, as an alliance of free and democratic nations, we will be able to expand on, on what we achieved at the Newport summit. The ambitious and unprecedented modernization of the Polish armed forces will complement this effort. We have no doubt that security always comes at the cost. We end and we are ready to bear this cost. This is why the Polish government and parliament have decided, as of next year, Poland will meet its NATO obligation of allocating 2% of GDP to defense. I hope, and for sure it was also, it was the initiative of Mr. President Komorowski also. I hope that other countries will follow suit. Third, the European Union should receive its role in today's world. We will be more effective if we have a clear picture of what lies ahead. The sum applies when it comes to be joined structures and comprehensive response to these challenges. I hope that the revision of the European security strategy will do just that. It's my belief that the process started by the High Representative will, let, will lead to an ambitious and un, unambiguous strategy. Poland has supported this effort, which we hope will also include bold steps to strengthen the common security and defense policy. While sticking its, to its core values, the EU should also reestablish its role as an engine of economic growth and a stabilizing force in both of its neighborhoods, east and south. The problem of increased migrat migratory pressure from North Africa of the, and the Middle East requires special attention and the solidarity of European countries, including those which may not necessarily be in the front line of this struggle. Poland has been extending a helping hand to those who suffer the most brutal oppression and who fear for their lives, people fleeing war-torn Syria. We will work closely with our EU partners toward a revamped European neighborhood policy, which will better respond to the short and long-term needs of our southern neighbors. And I believe that the European response 
to the situation in the East can be dri driving, driven so much by our values as by our interests. Political and economic sit assistance to Ukraine, support for its European dream, is not merely a moral question. An independent, prosperous Ukraine with a healthy economy will be a stabilizing force for the EU borders. Ukraine deserves a better future, and she needs, of, uh, she needs our solidarity. I look forward to the day when Ukraine joins the family of European nation, not as the partner she already is, but as a full and leg legitimate member of European and Euro-Atlantic Euro institution. Here I would like to stress that the Eastern Partnership is not the and will never become a pawn in the zero-sum game with Russia. We do not seek confrontation with our eastern neighbor. As much as we hope for a political solution to the crisis in Ukraine, we also look forward to re-establishing normal working relations with Russia after she turns to respecting basic international norms. Ladies and gentlemen, traditional threats to global security and stability are no less relevant than they were a few decades ago. However, as the world transforms into a global marketplace, trade liberalization becomes a force not just for prosperity, but also for peaceful relations among the nations. In many respects, healthy economic competition seem to seems to trump political and military, military confrontation. Two major projects the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership and the Trans-Pacific Partnership are set to establish new standards in trade relations and we will have the potential to energize the global economy. Importantly, TTIP can raise transatlantic relations to a higher level of economic and political cooperation, supplementing the close military alliance between Europe and the United States. It will also strengthen the role the position of the European Union, which remains the largest global economy and a market of 500 million consumers. Ladies and gentlemen, Poland wants to play a great, greater role in a global economic relation and exchanges. Promoting trade has become a day-to-day -day function of our diplomacy. This is a natural process. The success of Poland's transformation has made our country an attractive international partner. We have a lot to offer, from our unique experience of peaceful transition to high-quality products to an excellent business climate for investors. Wrocław is a typical, the, the best example for that. On the EU level, more intense economic ties should be used to reverse the trend of losing the edge in a global trade. Due to demographic, technological, and economic changes, the center of power and influence is shifting to other regions, Asia, Asia in particular. Beyond short-term economic gains, globalization can also translate into more stable and predictable international relations. And here, here, here again, Poland's role and contribution can be crucial for that. Transformation, modernization, good governance, uh, revival of universal norms of international law. Finally, the promotion of intercultural and interreligious dialogue. There are areas that must be explored if we honestly want to find solutions. Solutions not only of the problems of today, but also of the challenges that lie ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, I count on your contribution to this debate because it's an important one. And not only by asking questions, also by the seeking answers and proposing solution, common solutions. I look forward to what promises to be an intense and inspiring event. Thank you very much.